This is Montmartre in Paris, a place of steep and cobbled streets, a district full of character and charm. It's one of the most popular places in the whole of Paris. And it's here that the French artist Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec made his name. At the end of the 19th century, Montmartre was an exciting place. New technologies and political change were transforming everyday life. The entertainment industry was in full swing, with the opening of numerous cafe concerts, cabarets and theatres. Even windmills were transformed into concert halls. Artists, writers, performers and philosophers came to exchange ideas and break the rules. Toulouse-Lautrec was part of this. He used his posters and paintings not just to challenge what art could do, but also as a visual record of this exuberant era. He was born into a wealthy aristocratic family in southern central France in 1864. Suffering from a genetic condition that stunted his growth and restricted his ability to participate in physical activities, Toulouse-Lautrec directed his energy into painting and drawing, developing a distinct and fluid style. In 1882, he moved to Paris to further his training as an artist, settling in the colourful district of Montmartre. There, he became close friends with radical young artists like Vincent van Gogh and Emile Bernard. Around them, Parisian society was embracing a new, more liberal attitude and Toulouse-Lautrec and his fellow artists immersed themselves in the inspiring vibrancy of Montmartre life. Unlike the Impressionists, who gravitated towards scenes of upper-middle-class leisure, Toulouse-Lautrec preferred to depict the new urban nightlife. He could be found every night drinking and sketching at his favourite venues, the Moulin Rouge, the Chat Noir and the Murleton. The famous faces there became his friends and these recognisable characters populated his work. In the 1890s, technological advances in lithography were being pioneered by a number of Paris-based artists. It was the perfect medium for advertising. Desperate to attract new and larger audiences, the owners of the cabarets and concert halls were commissioning posters from artists such as Pierre Bonnard, Steinlin and Jules Chiray. Toulouse-Lautrec created a poster for the Moulin Rouge. His bold, fresh design made him an overnight success and one of the most sought-after designers. Over the next decade, Toulouse-Lautrec advertised numerous venues, promoting the performers, enhancing their careers and creating a culture of celebrity in Montmartre. But he also painted the quieter, unseen humanity of these different characters. He loved his subjects, lived with them and depicted them without judgement, a sympathy that perhaps came from his own sense of being an outsider due to his physical limitations. You can see his humane, realistic treatment of women who worked and lived in Montmartre in roles that society had traditionally frowned upon, such as sex workers and cabaret performers. He gives an honest depiction of their lives behind the scenes. His subjects are not miserable in the way that Degas had sometimes depicted them, but neither are they happy or idealised. He leaves us with the naturalness of their lives. Even today, Toulouse-Lautrec's enduring legacy is visible in Montmartre. His posters and paintings remain immensely popular, and they continue to influence. Toulouse-Lautrec died in 1901, aged only 36, but his art and the people depicted in his art continue to draw us back to this unique and inspiring part of Paris. <laughs>